Hello engineers, in this video lesson you're going to learn how to 3D model exercise 3 here. I'm not sure why this is showing up as that form. Uh, you'll notice the exercises that are colored like this are part of a exercise booklet that I have. You're going to be doing many many of these exercises and whenever you see these make sure that you're working in millimeters. All of these parts are in millimeters. So with that being said, let's get started. Open Autodesk Inventor, find this menu, and click on New Part. And since we are working in millimeters, we want to make sure that we are in millimeters. And you do that by going to Tools, Document Settings, Units, changing that drop down menu for length to millimeter, apply and close. Just some quick tips that I've been noticing. You have a little button right here that uh, I see some of you kind of accidentally clicking it. If you click it, it's going to change the way your workspace looks. And just click it until it looks like mine on screen. And oh, my cat just fell. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, also, I've been noticing that you're accidentally clicking the model browser and having it disappear. We always want the model browser up uh, so that we can see it and operate it, use it. So that's going to be in the view menu, user interface, and make sure model browser is checked. There's other things here that should also be checked, so make sure yours matches mine. Let's go ahead and start the model. So click on model, 3D model, start a 2D sketch. We're going to click the XY plane, clicking rectangle. I'm going to start on the origin here, like so. And uh, just drew a rectangle without adding the dimensions first. And that is going to be 100 by 45. So I'm going to click dimension, click that bottom line, move my mouse downwards, click again, type 100, click the front on the view cube to see the whole thing. Go ahead and dimension on the left side. So I'm clicking, click again, 45, enter. Click that front, and we're going to model this in a very specific way, so don't skip ahead. Don't finish sketch yet. We're going to draw this circle as part of it and extrude everything kind of all at once, and we're going to make the part all at once, and you're going to see how that works. So we have a circle here that has a diameter of 40, and it's centered, so that I know that because that 50 and it's 100, so that's the center. Click circle, hover over the top here until it snaps to that midpoint. Click, and right now I'm on radius. And how can I tell that? I can tell that because there's a dashed line going from the middle of the circle to the outside part of the circle, the edge of the circle. I'm going to right click on my mouse and click diameter so that I can see that dashed line is now from end to end. And what was it? It was right here, 40. So I'm going to type 40, enter, and then I have a outside diameter of 25. I'm sorry, not diameter, radius, radius. So I'm going to click, right click, click on radius, type 25, press enter, and we're getting somewhere. I'm going to click trim, I'm going to trim away that inside line here, this line, and this line, and this line. And then I'm going to draw a line. So I'm going to click on line. I'm going to draw a line from this end to this end, making sure it's perpendicular. Tap escape. Click dimension. Click that line. Click the bottom line. And that is, it says it right here, 20. So 20, enter. I'm going to go ahead and click finish sketch. Click on that home button, and here's where the magic of Inventor is going to come into play. I'm going to click extrude, and the bottom base is 60. So I'm going to click on that base right there, type 60, and then find the little plus button right here, and click it, and then click this surface right here, and that is 20, 20. Click that home. And there it is. There's the 3D model. It only took 
one sketch and two extrusions to make this 3D model. Let's get in the habit of giving it a material property. So up here in the top, you're gonna to see generic. That's all your material options. And for this one, let's say it is wood birch. I don't know, maybe it's a part of a piece of furniture that we have. Then go to file, save as, and this is ex-03, and then your name or your initials. So I'm gonna put cruzy save it and now let's move on we're going to move on to the technical drawing for this part there's a lot of ways you can set this up let's just do it kind of like the basic way uh, with the model open so even if, like let's say you close this and come back you got to you need the model open because it'll make the next step very easy click that little drop down menu click on drawing wait for it to load and let's set this sheet up so right click sheet one edit sheet size a we're going to use size a for the majority of our drawings the ANSI large this title block right here we don't want that so right click delete click the little plus button on the drawing resources click the little plus button on title blocks where it says ANSI a that's the title block that we want we're going to right click it insert and then our place views we're going to click base and our drawing view, so our front is gonna look like this. It, I don't think it's gonna fit on one one scale, so we're gonna drop it down to one half. And you, what do you do to move it around like I'm moving around? Move your mouse on top of the part, and you'll see the mouse will change. And you want it to be right here. So this is the front view. Remember, the front view is the bottom left side. Then move your mouse to the right. Click one time. Move your mouse to the top view area, click one time. Move your mouse to the isometric view area and click one time. Then click OK. Um, when you want to move your parts, the front view is what's going to move the side view up and down and the top view left to right. You can see that in the kind of like a preview of where it's going to get placed. The isometric views it's a matter of preference but i really like having them shaded so i'm going to double click on the edge of it and then click this button right here where it says shaded and click ok that way we can see the color of the par or the material it's it's just a nice little bonus there and now we're going to annotate this so let's go to tools document settings make sure our standard is an ansi mm otherwise it's going to show in inches and it's not going to match the uh, the original drawing like you see here click on annotate click on dimension let's take care of the major dimensions so in the it's gonna look exactly like this except we're gonna clean it up and make it a little more professional so dimension we're gonna dimension this bottom line here and before we even move on I'm gonna tap escape hover over the numbers right click and then click on edit dimension style and you need to get in the habit of doing this every single time you're going to uncheck trailing zeros then click on the text box or the text tab right here this is the vertical dimension inline we want that to be inline horizontal sometimes you'll have to adjust these other ones and that's going to be case by case drawing by drawing then click the little pencil icon here Save the edits, yes. Our preferred font is Technic. That's my preferred font. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that you do that too. Each engineering firm is gonna have their own preferred font. Ours is Technic. And the text height is gonna be 2.5 more millimeters. That way it just it's a little smaller, it's a little cleaner looking. Save and close. And there we have it. Then we're going to click on the center mark button click on this circle right here and this circle right here and these center marks they just happen to be okay so we're gonna leave those alone then click on the center line bisector and zoom into the side view and what you want to do you do not want to click on that midpoint you want to click on this line the hidden line 
and then this hidden line and it'll give you your center mark and then we're going to repeat that right here so click click that's the top view now okay so now I can tell that these hidden lines or I'm sorry these center lines are not good so I'm going to hover over the center line I'm going to right click edit center mark style and I usually like a one millimeter a with a one millimeter gap for B C can be three is fine um, but if you ever need to troubleshoot do two millimeter two millimeter two millimeter and see what it looks like so let me see save and close that's okay I don't really like it so I'm gonna edit center mark style again I'm gonna make a and B one and C is going to be 3. Save and close. Let's see what this one looks like. This one looks better. This one you can't really tell it's there, but it's there. Um, let's edit center mark style again. This is just me. Okay, so that D right there. Let's make that, let's make that 2. Save and close. That's a better center mark right there. Okay. Alright, let's... Uh, keep going so let's look at the we need this dimension at 50 the radius and the diameter so let's click on this edge and then this circle right here click on this circle click on this circle and you'll notice when there's like a half circle you're gonna get the radius when there's a full circle you're gonna see diameter click on that line and then do we have did it tell us yeah the total height is going to be from here to here right and then the side view we're going to have I see that got a 45 here seventy Twenty. Is there any dimensions on the top view? Yeah, there are. Hundred. That these are redundant. We don't really need these. Um. Let's just add them since they're there. They didn't really actually help us in our drawing. So, but we're gonna add them because we want to match what we see. But just keep in mind these are redundant. They are totally unnecessary. We're gonna leave. We're just gonna do it like that. And just make make sure. So here's another thing. If your drawing is, let me zoom in here. If your dimensions are touching the edge here, you're going to lose points. You want to make sure that you're creating clean, crispy technical drafting, technical drawings. And make sure none of your dimensions are touching or crashing into each other. Now let's add our parts list. So I'll click on parts list. The document is going to be the one we saved. Click OK. I'm going to put it in this space here, and then we'll, we're going to clean it up in a second. But double click it, find column chooser. We're going to get rid of quantity, item. We're going to get rid of all that stuff. And for this one, we're going to just use material, mass, and volume. And this is information you're going to end up needing to find on a couple of exams so just knowing how to do this is super helpful and I want you to get in the habit of doing that even if a future video lesson doesn't contain doesn't tell you to do this I'm gonna want you to do this okay because I've been learning along the way and have noticed that when students know how to add a parts list and find the mass the volume and other other information for example file I properties uh, it's not going to be in this one. It's going to be in the actual model here. File, I properties. When we update the physical properties on many exams, many engineering exams, they're going to ask you to change the material, update, and tell you the mass, the area, the volume. It is, it's even going to ask you the center of gravity. So that's the information that you don't see just in the software. You have to find it. You have to go to file, I properties, and look for it. With that being said, exercise three is almost done. I'm going to go to File, I Properties, Summary. The title of this is EX-03, 
you're the author. The company, make up a name. I'm going to put an engineering. Subject is engineering. So you apply and close. Now, from here, you got to do two things save. So click that save button. If you get an error, say yes to all and click OK. I've been getting that error a lot. It, I don't really understand what it's doing. And then you're going to export. So file, export, PDF. Save it as the same file name. And then from this window, this is your opportunity to make sure your the printer is connected to your computer. You're going to press on your keyboard. You're going to look at your keyboard and you type Control P for print. The printer, it's going to be one of these. It's going to be, it should be the Lexark, Lexmark MS510. And then you need to click Best Fit. If you don't see that there, that means it's not installed on your machine, your computer. You need to ask me to do that for you. And that way, when you click OK, you'll be able to print all of these. You're going to be making a portfolio of all of your drawings. I got a communication error because I'm not at school making this video, so it's obviously not going to print to that printer. However, that's the printer we use. If you get stuck, if you need help, help each other out. Talk to each other. Ask each other questions. Get my help when you're totally stumped. Good luck with exercise three and move on to the next assignment.